Okay, hi there, and welcome to a micro video looking at the cocoa market. We're going to focus on the industry, think about some of the demand and supply factors that make global cocoa prices especially volatile from month to month and year to year. The chart tracks cocoa prices measured in dollars per ton over the last 12 months. You can see the volatility in the world price of cocoa. And as you can see here, the volatility over a 10 year horizon is also quite significant. Although note that the Y axis has been shortened, which tends, of course, to exaggerate the movements up and down in price. But uh, cocoa is clearly a market where there's a lot of price volatility. Prices are moving quickly up and down. So here's a quick reminder of the basics when thinking about how prices move in a market. Typically, when the available stock of a product is greater than current demand, that leads to oversupply and prices tend to go down. However, when market demand is higher than available supplies, then stocks or inventories go down, and this then pushes market prices upwards. Oftentimes in a market, particularly in commodities, the herd behaviour uh, of speculators in the market to make a dollar or two, that can drive prices higher or lower. So a change in the sentiment of speculators can cause many to buy, in which case prices start rising, or to sell when prices start falling. Quick look at the global cocoa market to provide you with a little context. So global cocoa production has been in a long-term rising trend, as you can see from this chart. Uh, shows the million of tonnes cocoa, cocoa production uh, each year. But the long term sustainability of the cocoa industry is under threat, not least from the impact of climate change, but also the risk that a younger generation of people in the cocoa growing industries and countries will actually decide that the economic incentives to grow cocoa beans are just not strong enough. There are plenty of other better paid alternatives. 60% of cocoa bean output globally comes from Ghana and the Ivory Coast in West Africa. Those two countries dominate world production, as you can see from this chart. And this superb chart from the Observatory of Economic Complexity shows the dominant position of Ivory Coast and Ghana and Cameroon, uh, West African countries in the cocoa export figures for the world. Together, uh, those countries account for the lion's share of cocoa bean exports. However, uh, there's a difference between growing the beans and processing, or if, if you like, refining the beans. And many of the cocoa beans are shipped to Europe and America for processing, as this chart shows. The Netherlands, of course, is now the dominant uh, country for cocoa bean processing. Germany is also in there, as is the United States. If we then look at uh, the world exports of chocolate, this chart shows uh, the country by country breakdown. And you can see that few, if any, West African countries figure in the map of leading chocolate exporting nations. Let's take a look at some of the key factors operating on the demand side of the market. Factors affecting demand for cocoa beans. Key one is per capita incomes. Uh, typically, chocolate made from cocoa beans has a positive income elasticity of demand. So... Increasing per capita incomes, particularly in emerging market countries, could be a source of growing demand. Uh, demand for cocoa beans also determined by the relative price of cocoa substitutes. Not often there's a clear substitute, but it could be fruit or protein bars, coffee baked cakes, could be, uh, for example, substitutes for chocolate in markets. Big change, of course, is, uh, is the evolving consumer tastes and preferences. People's awareness, the health awareness and lifestyle choices can have a big impact on final demand. And uh, crucially, of course, there's a derived demand for cocoa. It's used in manufacturing uh, a wide range of consumer products, including cakes and biscuits. And as we mentioned already, we've hinted at there is often some speculative demand in the market. Cocoa is a soft commodity, lots such as tea and, and rubber and coffee, subject to speculative buying, particularly when prices are going up. What about the supply side factors? Here are some factors affecting industry supply. Uh, the impact of weather conditions affects yields, particularly, of course, uh, uh, periods of extensive dry periods, drought, or perhaps excessive rainfall can affect um, 
yields in the industry. Climate change increasingly having an impact on, on rainfall patterns and soil fertility. Um, supply basically is vulnerable to, to pests and extreme weather conditions such as intense rainy or dry, dry periods. Supply also impacted by the level of capital investment in cocoa farming, including investment in dry, safe, um, refrigerated storage. The productivity of individual cocoa plantations is a key supply side factor. Typically, productivity is pretty low in the industry as measured by yields per hectare. Um, partly because of a lack of capital, but also because you know, ageing trees and, and limited producer uptake of, of selection programmes. So there are big issues to do with productivity. Many of the cocoa farmers are very small and they have limited opportunity for economies of scale. Another supply side factor is the impact of innovation. That can sometimes be a positive influence on supply. But also increasingly, of course, land is in competitive supply. You don't necessarily have to grow cocoa beans. You could grow an alternative crop. So supply of cocoa can be affected over time by the prices and potential profits from growing an alternative crop to cocoa. Uh, the market is highly volatile. Let's quickly think a little bit about what causes volatility. Uh, cocoa is a prime example of a sector where prices move up a lot. Uh, so what factors might help to explain this? Well, first of all, demand for cocoa tends to be fairly price inelastic. The coefficient of price elasticity demand is less than one. Equally, supply to the market is also inelastic in the short term. It's very difficult to grow more cocoa beans e easily and quickly uh, in response to a change in price. Volatility also um, caused by the exposure to supply shocks, like we've mentioned climate already, and also by the impact of speculation. And demand and prices for cocoa are often sensitive to changes in the, the global economic cycle. So hence, we can then start to think about some basic supply and demand analysis uh, to help visualize the causes of price volatility. Uh, first, this diagram shows an adverse supply shock, such as maybe poor weather or political problems, causing an inward shift of the supply curve. And you can see the price goes up from P1 to P2 there in equilibrium. Uh, that increase in price particularly pronounced if the demand curve for cocoa is drawn as price inelastic. Another cause of volatility could be on the demand side of the market. Here I've shown an outward shift of market demand. And again, when elasticity of supply is low, as I've shown in my right hand diagram there, then a shift in the demand curve can again cause a significant rise in price. So typically, these are the kind of diagrams you would be drawing if you wanted to show diagrammatically to get good analysis marks uh, what causes price volatility. And price volatility can create and does create economic and wider social problems. It makes incomes and profits for growers uncertain. Um, if you don't know what your incomes and profits are going to be, it's harder to get those loans to fund investment. Millions of smaller farmers with low productivity are exposed to the world price moving up and down and they don't necessarily have the resilience to be able to cope with that. Even when prices go up, they don't necessarily gain, as we'll talk about in a second. Uh, at a macro level, volatile prices uh, mean that export revenues, C plus I plus G plus X minus M, uh, can be unpredictable. That can affect a nation's balance of trade, particularly, as we've seen in the case of Ghana and the Ivory Coast, where there's a high level of primary product dependence. And crucially, high prices can cause inflation, food poverty, particularly affecting families on the lowest incomes, where there's a limited social safety net. Just want to finish off by thinking about the importance of the value chain, the supply chain. Uh, the importance of cocoa in developing country, uh, countries such as Ghana and Ivory Coast you know, cannot be overestimated. More than two million farmers in Africa alone depend on cocoa for a big part of their income. Here's an example of the kind of cocoa supply chain from grower to export company to bean grading to mm. shipping, processing, manufacturing, of course, the final retail of a cocoa based product like a chocolate bar. It is imperative for cocoa growers in places like Ghana and the Ivory Coast to move up the value chain mm. into manufacturing, processing, marketing and sales because that then you can capture more of the income 
from the participation in the chocolate industry. Uh, by some estimates, for example, I was reading an article in the FT recently, the average farmer growing cocoa makes less than a dollar a day from the cocoa. And typically, uh, the, the final growers of cocoa beans make a very small percentage of the total value of the chocolate market. Um, massively important issue. James Hall is brilliant. I do recommend you follow Hall About Africa on Twitter. Absolutely brilliant on um, African development issues, often talks about the cocoa industry. So value added is essentially the issue at point here, from bean to bar. Uh, so what the Ivory Coast and Ghana need to do, instead of just shipping, growing and shipping out their cocoa beans to Europe and the United States, they need to um, develop some capacity uh, to extract some of the more value added of this $100 billion a year annual market. They only get 5% of the value of the market. And of course, there are big debates about labour standards in many cocoa growing countries as well. So the fundamental issue really is whether those cocoa growing sectors in Ghana, Ivory Coast, can they improve the livelihoods, the economic freedoms of the growers and, the, and their families over time? The World Bank is investing heavily in the Ghanaian cocoa industry, a $300 million investment. Ghana and the Ivory Coast have just announced a fixed price premium of $400 a tonne over the, the cocoa price to try and increase the income to, to cocoa growers. And finally, there is some evidence, maybe the possibility that uh, Africa might consider creating an OPEC style cartel for cocoa producers. What would it be called? COPEC, perhaps, where countries such as Ghana, the Ivory Coast, Nigeria, might come together to try to restrict supply to increase the world price of cocoa and get a better percentage of the output of the industry. There we go. Hopefully you've enjoyed this quick journey through the market for cocoa, uh, essentially looking at price volatility, but also thinking about the importance of value added in a vitally important sector for the development of those African countries.